Hi, Zach Cardle here. I want to talk about another type of reduced voltage starters. Um, so basically the idea is when I start a three-phase induction motor, I want to use a special starting method so that I can bring down that inrush current when we start the motor. Uh, so the type I want to talk about right now is called a Y-delta starter. Um, basically with this, what we do is we take a six lead single voltage motor, uh, so it'll have T1 through T6 on it. Uh, what we're going to do is when we start the motor, we configure those windings in a Y formation. And then in order to run the motor, we switch them over into a delta formation. Now really what this does, if we think about it, when I apply a line voltage, line to line, T1 to T2, if they're in a Y configuration, I see a reduced voltage on each of those windings. We know when my voltage goes down, my current comes down. So that's how I'm gonna bring down the current. Then when I switch it into a delta, I still apply the same voltage, but now I am applying that voltage across the phase, so I bump up that voltage. So let's kind of talk about um, how this sequence of operation works and how that Y delta motor functions through this wiring diagram. Uh, so when I start the motor, I press start, my motor contactor energizes, holding contacts close, and my timing relay energizes, as well as I have my Y contactor energized. Sometimes this can be called a start coil. I just labeled them Y and D for Y and delta. Sometimes it's start and motor two, just depends. So my M1, or my motor, timing relay, and my Y contactor are all energized. What that means is I'm gonna have, these three contacts are gonna close, and if I'm current flowing through line one, through my set of overload heaters, through my coil, T1 through T4, and then back up to here, these sets of contacts are open. So what I do is I go through this Y point, and then back over through T6, back up T3, and I'm basically running in that, or starting, sorry, in that Y formation. Right, so I see that reduced current. Then what happens after a few seconds um, this is, would be considered an open transition because what would happen is my normally closed time to open contacts would open, basically de-energizing it in Y, and my normally open time to close contacts are going to close, energizing my D coil or my delta coil, which would close these sets of contacts. So now when current flows, it would flow through line one, out T4, and then back to the source, right? Which would essentially put all of those into that delta formation. So we switched around that formation. Um, so the effect this has, right? Uh, because we're reducing the phase voltage, we're not changing the phase impedance. What we see is our current at start is gonna be our full voltage start current. Right, which would be if we were to just start this motor in delta, what would our inrush current be? Uh, divided by three. So we actually only see one third of the starting current, right? So we only see 33% or one third of the actual starting current if we were to start it in delta. So we see that huge drop in inrush current, which is great. Unfortunately, with that huge drop of inrush current, our torque at start sees that exact same relationship. So it's also gonna be our torque of our full voltage start divided by three. Right, so we see a big drop in current, big drop in torque, but we can maybe start that motor with smaller conductors or things like that, right? So this again is a motor where you'd wanna start it and then start adding load on afterwards once it's switched over into that delta formation. The last thing I want to talk about is very, very different and important with a Y delta starter. It has to do with where those overloads are located. So when we think about this, when I was running in delta, because we only care about the overloads when our motor is actually running. When I'm running in delta, right, we know normally in delta, if we were to have an overload in the line, it would be there, it would see line current, which is what the nameplate value is. However, in this case, our overloads only see the current that's gonna flow through one phase at a time, not splitting off and going into two. So in this case, our overloads have to be based off of phase current and not line current. So what we see when we're sizing our overloads is we are gonna take our FLA, 
our full load current, divide it by root three, because that's going to give us our phase current. You can also multiply it by 57% or anything like that. So divide by root three, and then we times it by our service factor multiplier, which we can find in the code book to size those overloads. Uh, again, thanks for watching. I really hope this helped.